First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. Uh... How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. Today I want to discuss disgruntled employees. I mean, not only do they kill the employee morale, they actually pose a threat to the safe and secured running of our correctional facilities. And that's what I'm going to explain here in this video. I'm going to explain how disgruntled employees pose a threat to the safe and secured running of our facility. I would love to get your comments on this. Now, guys, the show Tear Talks for you, you brave men and women that work in corrections. So if you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. The bell is going to notify you every time I post up a video. I stand by for our sponsor. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. Disgruntled employees, don't they kill the employee morale? Common Sense 101, right? You have a disgruntled employee that's just negative and pessimistic all the time. What they do is they kill the morale. They kill it. And the concern here is that nobody's going to want to be around them. And what I mean by nobody, I mean his peers or her peers, supervisors. They tend to avoid this person who is disgruntled because again, if you're a positive person, you enjoy what you do, you like your job, you're not gonna wanna be around people that bring you down. You're not gonna wanna be around people that are negative and just pessimistic, you know, people that are seeing the glasses being half empty. And our natural reaction, again, to someone who's constantly negative, complaining, disgruntled, is we avoid them. And in corrections, it's really not that good of an idea to avoid that individual because now not only do you have an individual who is disgruntled, you also have an individual who is isolated. And there's a divide. And the inmates see that divide. So again, the disgruntled employee is setting himself up or setting herself up to be a target. And then we're providing the environment because again, we don't want to be around this individual. The individual is constantly complaining and just full of negativity and we step away from that individual knowingly or unknowingly. I mean, sometimes the person could just have an effect on us that we don't even realize that we're just pushing the person away. Sometimes it's just happening voluntarily, if you will. Or sometimes it's like, you know what? I just can't talk to this guy today. So you do whatever you can to avoid the individual. And inmates see that, by the way. Inmates see that there's a divide between you and that disgruntled employee. Trust me, they either see it by the way you guys interact with each other or they, they hear it by what the disgruntled employee says or what we're saying about that disgruntled employee because they hear it. Again, they hear everything. You always got to be careful what you say behind the confines of that wall. You know, those inmates hear everything. So you have a disgruntled employee that's separated from staff. Perfect, perfect target. That person is a perfect target. So what you'll start to see is you may see manipulative inmates side with that isolated, disgruntled staff member. Whatever that disgruntled staff member has concerns about, those inmates are going to agree. Those inmates are going to sympathize to get to the point where the disgruntled employee, who again is isolated, will find refuge among those inmates who are looking to, again, possibly manipulate, most likely that's what we have to be concerned about, but are looking to build a relationship that crosses into the undo, that takes the officer out of their prescribed role. So again, a disgruntled employee is a cancer, especially in corrections. And it's not just about the employee morale. It's about the fact that this, this disgruntled employee can wind up being set up and now we have a security concern. So again, when we have a disgruntled employee, we have to figure out a way to address that individual. And here's the hard advice I'm going to give. We cannot make them feel isolated. 
at least the inmates have to see that there's going to be an attempt from us every day to communicate with that individual. Even if it means that we we got to hear the negative. But the inmates need to see that that disgruntled staff member is still connected to us somehow. However miserable or however pessimistic or negative, we cannot leave that disgruntled employee by himself for the inmates to just kind of bounce on. And when I say inmates, I mean the inmates that are looking to do the wrong thing and manipulate. Remember that. Don't take things out of context. We've had discussions before where we know that there are some inmates that are looking to do their time correctly. But again, we have to act on universal precautions, so we always have to be prepared for those who choose to do things foolishly. So again, when you have a disgruntled employee, we have to find a way to keep that disgruntled employee within our group. And it's very, very hard. Again, some good supervisors will try to find ways to motivate that employee. Uh, we may even try to, as peers, talk to the employee, try to understand their perspective and just build that rapport. But again, I, I'm just building this as, I'm doing this video as a reminder that our automatic instinct is going to be to push ourselves away from the negative, from those that are pessimistic. That's our automatic instinct. In corrections, we're going to have to act in the opposite manner. We can't push ourselves away because we're leaving that disgruntled employee isolated. And that is not going to be good because the inmates are going to see that. They're going to pounce. What's your thoughts on this, guys? You guys deal with disgruntled employees. What would be some advice that you would give and how to deal with those disgruntled employees? Do you guys avoid them? And now do you think that's a good idea? Or do you guys try to understand their perspective and try to see if there's anything you can do to build some form of positive mindset with the individual or at least remind the individual hey i'm here for you you can go to me if you have a concern because the key is we cannot leave that person isolated we have to make it known that as best we can we're here we can only do the best that we can do i mean that's the key at the end of the day if the person continues to be disgruntled and continues to badmouth the job they're not going to be a good fit for this profession and we may have to do what we got to do to make sure that we remove that. Because if not, that person could pose a security threat easily. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. Love your thoughts on this. Please, if you haven't subscribed, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe.